Hey, this is Buck Paladus. Thank you for joining me for episode 84 of my RimWorld Rich Explorer playthrough. Just thought I'd take a quick moment uh, to just talk about statistics because it's been quite interesting how leaving somebody with certain weapons affects the amount of damage they do and the amount of kills they get. Let me give you an example. Now, Randolph has been in the team the longest and he has indeed got the most human kills but he hasn't got the most damage dealt. He's got 53 human kills, 19 mech kills, which he's actually surpassed by by somebody else. I'll come to that in a second. Um, he hasn't done the most damage dealt. He's done 35,000 damage dealt. The two people with the most kills, if we want to talk about the most damage, that is Zekus and May. Now you'll notice Zekus, although he hasn't got it on him, and May are the people with the sniper rifles. They generally are sitting at the back, plinking away, doing solid damage. They're both very effective at, uh, at shooting, so they're really racking up the damage. Zeke's has got 45,819 damage dealt, so he's the, the highest. Um, May comes a very close second with 44,588. And in fact, May has the most mech kills, which I think is really quite interesting. Now, Freckles also has a notable mention. Freckles comes in the third place with 46 human kills and 39,000 damage dealt. Now, she joined in episode 24. So both Zekus and May, who joined in episodes 3 and 12 respectively, have got quite the advantage, yet she's caught up quite impressively. Now I think Freckles has had this masterwork assault rifle the whole time. I think it's masterwork, isn't it? And it's clearly making a lot of difference. It's got a good range on it, decent rate of fire, and it's doing a lot of damage. So, hmm, that's really interesting how this kind of pans out. Um, so I thought it's worth worth mentioning. Um, if you haven't uh, seen the spreadsheet I'm pulling this from, then take a look down in the description and uh, all the stats are on there. I've just updated it today. And uh, an honourable mention goes to Reese. Now Reese joined in episode 43, and he's got 37 human kills and 25,800 damage, so he's actually doing really well as well. <laughs> Good for Reese. So yeah, it's uh, it's quite interesting if you if you do like figures and stuff, then have a look at it. All right, let's moving on. Uh, let's move on, should I say? I'm really hoping that um, Hicklin's leg that that's got mashed off isn't the Barnick leg that I fitted for him. That would be a bit of a drag, quite frankly. I can't check because he's being carried to safety. Um, now, we are just uh, mopping up from yet another uh, attack from the mechs, which I'm hoping will be the last. Komnenos, uh, let's get somebody who's not we've got Squirt down as well. Alright, so Truskos is going to rescue Squirt, Komnenos is going to rescue Cobra. And let's hope this is the last mech attack for a while, because I could really do with uh, a break and getting these guys uh, back on uh, an even keel. And I'm going to send tomorrow Anthusia and Lorenzo are going to send them off and we are going to get onwards with the base, the new base. Okay, let's press play, let everyone get on with it. Babs appears to be taking yep, Hicklin to the hospital, we're all picking up here, let's allow those two folks to do their thing. Looks like they're grabbing up some psychite tea. And I think that's okay for now. We need to get somebody to pick up Zekas' weapon. I don't know when Zekus was down. What happened to Zekus? Oh, that's right. He had a little bit of a wobble, didn't he? I know <laughs> no one's picking him up. Scarborough is changing his clothes. Okay, well, you, you can rescue Zekus as and when that comes. That's right. He had a wobble. I mean, he, he had to be put down. All right, cool. Um, Squirt and Cobra's stuff. So, so. All right, I'll, uh, I'll sort all this out and I'll be right back. Well, on the plus side, um, Hicklin didn't lose his bunny leg. He lost his left leg. So I think we can actually give him a prosthetic leg, which is considerably easier to build, and he'll still kind of wind up with about 100% because the bunny leg will, is obviously giving him over 100%. So I think that's probably the wise thing to do. I can make a prosthetic leg on here. I think it's on here. Is it on here? Prosthetic legs? Yes. I might make two for now, actually, and uh, make a bunny leg. Maybe a bit later on. Maybe not. I'm not going to be doing a particularly. It's going to be more static when I get to the ice sheet, so the speed of them moving I don't think is going to become in too important. We aren't raiding bases anymore, so I think we'll be okay with prosthetic legs. Anyway, we shall see. Oh dear, this is what happens when love goes wrong. May told Lorenzo it's not working out, they're no longer in a relationship. That is a big problem, because Lorenzo, I'm about to send Lorenzo off on a big trip, and I could do without him with a minus 20. Hmm... On the plus side, he's have to rebuff Babs. Maybe Babs is a bit of an option. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, oh, this game just gets more and more difficult, doesn't it? Okay, so she's not that bothered by it. Um, she got some loving, but not anymore she ain't. 
Okay, uh, so they've had to get split up from there. <sighs> they obviously shouted across the hospital to each other. And by the way, you're dumped. Lorenzo's going to have to heft around minus 20 for quite a while. That is going to put a crimp in my timetable. What's he got going on here? Okay, so the pain's going to go away. So will the hunger. So he's actually generally happy. Although some of this is going to disappear when he moves base. So, uh, all right, fine. Thanks, mate. Okay, just an update. Um, both Hicklin and Squirt have our prosthetic legs now installed. Um, Hicklin, I think, will be kind of all right. He's got one above average, one below average, and Squirt is going to have to limp around a little bit. Uh, but that's okay. As I said, we're not doing uh, base raids or anything. Speed won't be an issue because I think we're going to be more defense than anything else. I mean, speed's always good, but it, we, we can work around it. Volcanic winter is still here. It's been over over seven days, and it's still minus 37 outside. But that's okay. Um, and Thuja is... We had to put a locker up, around in insult, insulting spree. Uh, Lorenzo, I think, is going to be all right. As soon as the pain goes away and it's going down considerably, we'll just have the divorced um, debuff. But I, th I think we'll be okay with that. He may break at some point, but really, it's going to have to be Lorenzo because he's got the drill arm. And um, if there is any problems, we can always fast skip up there a little bit sooner than intended. We have five people with fast skip, so that's uh, that's something that, that we can work around. I may have been a little overzealous with the uh, marking of trees to be chopped down, and I may or may not have accidentally chopped down the anima tree. This is to be confirmed. Don't know who did it. Not my fault. Nothing happened. Move along, nothing to see here, nothing to see. You know, I've been having a think, and I don't think Anthusia and Lorenzo are the right people to send. There's a couple of reasons for this. They're both kind of unhappy. Lorenzo's just been divorced. Anthusia seems to be a little on edge for some reason. Don't know why. There's nothing, no real reason for it, but um, I am gonna send husband and wife team Randolph and Yumi. Now, the reason for this is that they will both get a buff for being together. They're both reasonably good. I mean, Randolph's reasonably good at mining. Uh, Yumi is reasonably good at mining, was Yumi. Um, also, Yumi's got a wide range of skills to kind of keep everybody happy uh, if we get into trouble. Randolph's a pretty good shot with this. Uh, this He's a quick sleeper, so he'll get lots of work done. I think this is going to generally be happier, because also they're going to get loving benefits, the opinion of his wife, Yumi, etc., etc. I think this is going to be good for a two-person team where them not breaking is going to be key. So on that basis, I'm going to send Randolph and Yumi. Now, they're both in very good spirits, so I'm going to start loading up now. There's a list of things I need to take to make sure I don't muck this up. Um, we've now got enough wood, and um, we're in a good position, so I'm going to get it loaded up, and we're going to get out of here and start the next phase of this operation. If only Randy does not send us any mechs. We shall see. It's still minus ridiculous temperature. Volcanic winter in the winter is really not nice. Okay, this is it. The time has come. I'm pretty sure I've forgotten something, but all we're doing is a quick stop, build a shack, build the chem fuel, the launchers. One thing I need to make sure is that I've got the ability to make, from a construction point of view, the launcher and the launcher pod, but I think I have. <laughs> it's too late to check now. But Randolph's been around forever. He can make anything. He's fine. All right, let's select the launch group and let's get out of here. Select launch group. I'm going to launch. All right, so how far can we blast we can blast ourselves up to up to here the junction okay, okay this is good this is good so we're going to drop ourselves to here and then we're going to basically blast ourselves onwards so it looks like um let's go here this was quite interesting we're only going to do a quick stop so that's fine let's do that Doink. off we go the next stage has begun it's taken some time but we have got here Doink. and we're going to settle because we can't move. Too much weight. <laughs> okay, they've landed. So this is looking good. Let's have a little we can we can steal this. This this looks it's got some flooring as well. Very nice. We will definitely, definitely sort that out straight away. So I'm gonna get going with the structural this. We're gonna go with wooden wall. We're going to do that, 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 and that. Then when that's built, we're gonna deconstruct these items and that in the middle. We don't need that. Deconstruct that. We're going to claim all of this as well. Beautiful. All right, so they'll crack on and do that. Now, where's what? So what do we have on the map? We've got an ancient danger there. We're probably not going to mess with that. I don't see any need to do that right now. We've got two people. How cold is it here? Still minus 41. Wow, that is cold. We have parkers if they want to put those on. 
He's wearing a heavy fur parka now. I think, is that better than blue fur? Not sure. All right, well, that's cool. So we're gonna create a stockpile zone here as we as we normally would. Uh, what else? We need to drag things inside here, of course. So let's work that out in a minute. Um, little pile of stuff there. I'm actually gonna put a door in here, obviously, because... Oh, no, we've got two doors already. Uh, yeah, I'll tell you what, let's not... Door takes up too much um, resources, so let's just do that for now. So let them crack on with that, um, and then we'll... Yeah, that, that, that kind of works. I'm gonna get the unstable power cell put in too. In that corner. Uh, we want to build a table, we're gonna get the heater put in, just to make things nice and toasty. I don't want to get things in the way here, so I've got to do that, do that. Uh, we're gonna build a table, a little... A little table, can't eat without a table. A shocking crime in RimWorld. Uh, we're going to stick there uh, a couple of stools as well. I need them to get this structure built so I can get on with it. Is the construction not really on your list of things to do, guys? No? Well, I think it should be. So both of you are constructing first and you're doing that second. Don't worry about cleaning either. All right, so hopefully that should trigger them into doing the right thing. Don't worry about hauling. Start building. Start building. Perfect. Lovely. I want this to be nice and inside and toasty as soon as possible. It's minus 39. The power cells up. Beautiful. Let's get a roof on this thing. Alright, Randolph, I need you to... Oh, okay, you're doing that. Randolph, I need you to do that, do that, do that, and then do that, in case you weren't. I've got something to eat now. That's good. This is a good thing. Yumi's going to finish this. I don't know if one heat is going to be enough. We shall see. We shall see. Got some lights. We're going to get our bed rolls down as well. So let's do that. They should really be sleeping together. That's a bit of an oversight on my behalf. Um, where can I arrange those? Just uh, just there. It's fine. And I'll do the other one as well. All right. So a couple there. That's fine. So the heat is improving. We're repairing the walls, so I don't think that's really necessary. What else have we got here? Oh yeah, the statue. Let's install the statue. That's what we're going to do. Let's deconstruct these slate urns. Oh, we're going to get the statue installed. Alright, they've got somewhere to sleep. And it's getting to be a little bit warmer in here. Not massively. Manhunter pack. <laughs> really? Okay, okay, what do we got? Fennec, Arctic Foxes, Manhunter, all right then. So, Yumi, looks like you're up. What have you got? We've got Stun, we got Heat Dump, that's no use. Chaos Skip, Smoke, Word of Inspiration, Berserk Pulse, all right. Okay, we're fully charged. All right, so their, their, first, uh, their first little challenge. Let's get outside, let's get here. Not a massive issue, not yet anyway. Minus, oh, this temperature's killer. Where are they coming? Here they come. I'll do a Berserk Pulse if I can. That will take some of the uh, some of the issue off, but we'll see how close they are to each other. Yeah, they're sticking close to each other. Chaos skips further. How much is that? 18 at 2% cost. All right, that's cool. So there goes one. Yumi's going to come back here. I'm not sure Berserk Pulse is much good, especially the closer they get, the less, less useful it's going to be. Who are you attacking? Yeah, okay. Can't do much about that, unfortunately. I'm going to Chaos Skip you out of here. Yeah, that's it. Chaos Skip, I've never <laughs> never found to be particularly useful. All right, well, we're going to have to take some damage here by the looks of it. Um, <laughs> can't do anything here. Chaos Skip is utterly useless. Stun, I suppose. Randolph can fire this dude. Randolph, you've got to be firing better than that, buddy. That's one. Yumi. Couple of scratches. Actually, Yumi would be better off just... Oh, there we go. Done. All right, fine. All good. Um, some scratches which need... Ugh, can I turn on self-tending? 
All right, so let's get you guys. Let's get you down here. They're going to pick up infections. I bring across any medicine. I forgot the medicine. Fantastic. All right. Well, I wasn't anticipating them getting uh, this hurt this this soon. Yumi, rest until healed. Randolph, what's Randolph doing? Going for a walk. No, you're not. You're going to tend to your wife, my friend. I'm going to tend to Yumi, just so we can get rid of this. Down to minus one. The heater is heating up. I want to increase the heat on this to significant levels to kind of offset. There we go. Oh, we did bring some medicine. Of course we did. Okay. I think she'll be okay. All good. We need to... Yeah, okay. Right, I'm going to um, sort this out, tidy up a little bit, and then I'll be right back. All right, so while Randolph and Yumi are setting up home and uh, trying to get warm, building a pod launches to carry on with phase two of their journey, we've got a uh, man-hunting megasloth. It looks like Randy's woken up this morning and decided that, you know, mechs are so yesterday, we're going to hit him with manhunter packs. All right, well, this is not to be taken lightly if i'm being honest so what we need to do is be a little bit careful with this on the plus side it's going to give us a decent amount of armor for the end game because our armor is starting to wear out you notice that people are starting to take off the cataract armor as it reaches 50 percent and it reaches sort of tattered area so we're gonna have to come up with an, uh, a plan b basically and heavy fur is very good uh, which is what the mega sloths give off in order to uh, sort of to make dusters out of all right, so how are we going to do this? We've got enough magic powers and stuff for this not to be a massive issue, but I want to try and be as careful as possible. So I th think, yeah, let's let's try and engage them. Try and make them come across here if we can. That would be quite useful. So I'll put them in this little pocket here. My Timberwolf. Oh, that's good timing. Right, yeah, it looks like Randy's uh, really drawn the uh, annoying animal card today. Do you know, I don't think this is a very good idea at all. They're not, they're going to come round, aren't they? Yeah, okay. All right. It's going to be the old choke point again, isn't it? Everyone get inside. And what's going to happen here is Ilala Pro is going to come in here. We're going to move all the shooters at the back and all the people with the pointy things at the front here like we always do all right so what we got here squirt can come kind of come up here a little bit we're going to get taruskos savannah flanker lorenzo caminos you're going to go there you're going to go there hickley in the second line because you can do the rest really these guys need to come here all right so orcs there porcupine uh, Callisto's there. Oh, Ezra, Ezra, Ezra. Ezra has a jump pack. I think Ezra's going to have to use the jump pack. He's just getting picked up by these two. Hmm. Right, Ezra. I'm going to have to, yeah, micromanage this now. Because significantly. Okay. Ezra's going to get picked up by the Timberwolf as well if I don't watch it. So let's just uh, let's do this. Oh no, he's got invisibility. Yeah, okay, that, that could work for him actually. Right. I need to take a look at some skills. Who's got skills? Berserk Pulse would work quite well right now. Who's got Berserk Pulse? Scurabry, Yumi and Squirt. So uh, Yumi's not here, but Squirt is. Where's the... Does Berserk Pulse work on Manhunter? I don't think it does, does it? I don't think it does. Okay. Well, we've got other things. The um, blinding pulse is normally pretty good. What's the uh, the vertigo pulse? Who's got that? Porcupine, cobra, Ezra. Porcupine's there. Vertigo pulse. Yeah, that works. Ah, oh, we can't. Um... We need to build this one row further out. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get those three to fire at the wall here. Okay, let's just keep an eye on Ezra here. Ezra is going to... Oh, those doors are still open. That's annoying. He's going to jump up here. Then he's going to turn himself invisible. Uh, 
and he's going to come to here and then up to here and then to here all right how are we doing here have you lost any people yet no we haven't have we killed this wall yet no we haven't now we have right now who was it with the porcupine wasn't it that's right <clears throat> so porcupine do vertigo pulse here now which means it clears us beautifully everyone's puking how's ezra do ezra is all good when is invisibility wearing off eight seconds i think we'll be okay i can smell human can't see human confused let's go eat other humans right i think one of my guys is down no no they're not down it looks like they're down but they're not Porcupine, you're up again. Let's go, Pulse. Okay, just a few left now. Ezra's got safety, more importantly. These doors are still open. <laughs> uh, bit of a problem. Should we rotate people out? Actually, no, we're left big toe torn off. That's annoying. All right, Flanky, you can go. Chill out, buddy. Communos, you're up. Yeah, maybe maybe come back more. Okay, it looks like that's it. And you got the, the wolf over here, which we'll deal with in due course. All right, that went pretty well, apart from Flanker getting his uh, bits torn off. But that's cool. Um, I think everyone here is good. We're going to pick up these pieces... If I just, can I mark these to be guys to be hunted? I think I can, can't I? That'll just uh, automate the back end of this uh, hunt. Yeah, sweet. Then if I do that and do that, it's all good. All right, cool. Good stuff. How's Randolph getting on? So we put uh, Statue in here now, so it's now slightly impressive. Yumi's still in bed, sleeping. I don't think she's, uh, she's not best happy, if I'm being honest. Um, okay, so we've built one of these. Randolph is going to build the other one now. Um, we've got... I thought we had more metal. Have I messed this up? Did I not? I'm sure I brought more metal than that. I might mess this up. That's really frustrating. I could have sworn I brought more. I brought enough metal to make. Oh, maybe I did. No, because I haven't built the pods yet. Oh, that's annoying. That's a that's a boo boo on my part then, isn't it? 60 steel. How much have we got left here? 45. Well, that's a drag. Okay. Well, hmm. We can mine a little bit if we have to. We've got enough to complete this and fill it up with chem fuel. I'll just set that target level up to high. Hmm. That's a bit of an oversight. Interesting. I've not made anything of metal. That's, uh. I just must have miscalculated. Okay. Well, we've got some metal here we can mine out, so it's not the end of the world, frankly. We can uh, we can make our own. If not, we'll shoot some more from uh, from back at base here. Uh, we can actually just create some, a couple more transport pods. I think we're going to need those anyway, just in case. Maybe a couple. Okay, that's that. I'll be right back. Okay, so it's mission successful. We've built uh, the pods and the pod launchers, and we have enough here to uh, jump us, basically, in terms of fuel, right up to... This was the extent, the range of fuel, so I calculated that uh, correctly. I'm now caught in a quandary of whether I send them to this spot or to this spot. Now, half of me is thinking, let's just get on with this. The other half of me is thinking, yeah, but if we if we activate this spot, it's going to start getting raids and the ship is quite vulnerable. Now, the other thing to consider is that I've got an awful lot, 16 yaks. Now each yak can carry a lot. I might be able to just bring the stone with me. And I don't have enough here. I'm going to have to start stone cutting like a like a nutter, quite frankly. Um, and I think I might have enough. Now by my calculations, I'm going to need just over about 1,300 stone. That's something I should have been doing and took my eye off the ball. But what I can do is start to deconstruct the walls and stuff i got here to actually make that happen. I think I've got enough lying around that I could make that happen. So I'm going to start doing that, start deconstructing. There's stuff here, you know, around here that I can deconstruct and it should work. I think I'll hit that quite easily. Then load up the axe and we can just jump and get out of here. So Randolph and Yumi just in a sort of a holding pattern. They're quite comfortable in here. It's quite uh, quite nice. Um, they've, there's not a lot to do, if I'm being honest. 
they could do a spot hunting, I suppose. But they are a little bit ahead of time here. So I'm just going to let them chill and do their thing for now. Uh, but we can need to start um, taking walls down. So that's what I'm going to start doing. Start taking walls down. Start um, putting away things that I need to take with me. Then we're going to hit the road. We're going to. I think we're going to jump up to the ship. We're going to jump, transport pod these guys up to the ship and then fast skip everybody up to them. And let's just get on with it. I think is probably where we're going to go. So I'm going to focus on that. I think this is probably a good natural break um, for this episode because I need to work out what I'm going to do. I don't have a lot of time today um, to spend on this. So this might leak into tomorrow, but that's fine. Start to deconstruct the walls and then we are going to decide what we're going to leave, what we're going to take. I think we're going to travel very light. It's just going to be resources, the weapons we carry, medicine, food. That's pretty much it. I don't think we need to take much else. This stuff is just going to have to stay here. I'm probably going to leave the base. So if we need to come back to it as an option, we can. I can't imagine the situation where that would ever happen, but you never know. But uh, that's where we stand right now. So it's going to be Operation Dismantle Everything. Like this here, for instance, could take it down. Um, you know, there's enough walls here, I think, that we can meet that 1,000 stone, 1,500 stone relatively easily. I've, I've done a lot of building, so uh, we'll go with that. So I'm going to leave it there. Thanks for watching. We finally moved off, off the hex and we are one hop away from fast skipping everybody back up to join Yumi and Randolph and get on with the last ship encounter, which is where we are going to be in the next episode. So yeah, it's all going to kick off next time. I'm looking forward to it. We're going to get up there, build the walls, light the ship up straight away. There's going to be no mucking about because um, obviously food is something we've got to keep an eye on. We've got enough to keep us ticking over quite happily, but you know what's going to happen. Food binges and God knows what else. And um, we're going to chop these guys up and take this with us, build a, a, a tailor, a tailoring table. In fact, we're going to take this with us. We've already told Anthusian whoever else to start making heavy fur parkas because that's what I think people are going to start switching into. Um, not great armor, but good for um, good for warmth. And uh, yeah, we'll go from there. All right. Thank you again for watching. You take care of yourself. This is Bug. Pulling the plug.